transform us that your word will impart your life into our spirits that your word will restore hope to the hopeless that your word will give us a notable shift in destiny that your word will open us up to the bounties that exist in you father visit us let the spirit of revelation and wisdom be available tonight let the hearts of your children be open to receive and let the glory return to your name i said let the glory return to his name in jesus name can you do me a favor before you sit down when i say in jesus name i want you to shout amen with the top of your voice in jesus name Please greet somebody by your side left and right and just welcome them to another experience in the presence of God as you take your wonderful seats. Holy Word, long preserved for our hearts in this world. There is sound with God's own voice. Oh, let the ancient words impart. Ancient words ever true, changing me and changing you. We have come with open hearts. Oh, let the ancient I'd like every one of us to believe tonight before we begin. I want you not just to know, but to believe that there is only one thing that is capable of changing your life, not a job. Not a miracle job, not an income, not even a man. Transformation exists within only one agency, and that is the agency of the Word of God. It is only the Word of God that can enter the life of a man, search out and remove that which does not conform to the image, the blessing and the patterns of God, and then seeks to restore in the life of that man that which God has proposed making sure that after that encounter the man looks or begins to progress in looking like Christ and in conforming to the will of God all that happens within an hour within a few minutes that's why if you truly listen to a message not just a sermon if you truly listen to a message that is born from the Spirit not just because we know how to do good bible studies or because we have knowledge of scripture no the bible says the letter in itself kills it is the spirit in the world that transforms every exposure to the word of god is a deliberate attempt to create christ in the life of that individual so that physically you may be john or esther but inside of you and in your mind there is a transformation that is in progress so much so that when god looks at you he begins to see himself the bible says i commend you to the word of his grace that means when the word comes it releases grace grace that gives ability to become an ability to do that which only god can do i commend you to the word of his grace that is able to do what build you up first you can never remain the same after listening to the word of God you can remain the same after watching a movie you can remain the same after watching a football match you can remain the same after eating a good meal or even chatting with some friends but not when you are exposed to the word of God the word of God is more than a book it is a person it is a life it is a system 
it is capable of transforming not reforming no human beings know how to reform all they do is change the physical structure of that thing but the real content remains the same transformation can only be commanded by one individual and that is god and he does it through his word we we'll watch news every day we we'll listen to all the information that goes on around us and if care is not taken, your life is beginning to come. If care is not taken, your life is beginning to look like the news that you hear. And if you live your life believing all that you hear on media or news, there is every tendency that you begin to live in fear naturally. Fear will naturally become the atmosphere around you. There is only one source that gives you hope in the midst of a dark world. It is the word of God. It is in the word of God that Jesus said that there shall be famine and earthquake and plagues and wars and rumors of wars. He said, but all these things are only the beginning of sorrows. He said, but until this gospel. So in the midst of this chaos, there is a global reset that is happening. Now what I'm saying is a prophetic word. That in the midst of all that is happening, there is a global reset that God is engaging that the word of god is bringing light in the midst of the darkness that surrounds this world the bible says darkness shall surround the earth and gross darkness is people both the glory of god that glory is ignited when you are exposed to your future that resides in this world the bible says that whosoever looketh unto the perfect law of liberty I advise you that your, your, your work with God must go beyond listening to Sunday sermons. You must create ample time to look at the Word of God. Many of us are busy with many things legitimately, but very few of us take our time to look into God's Word. Many, very, many few of us even believe that our life is supposed to be structured based on the pattern that is revealed in His Word. And that's the reason why we believe all kinds of report except the report of God. But whose report will you believe? Are we together? So that is what we seek to do. To preach one sermon or just come in to say new things. No. Sometimes what you hear may not be new. It may just be something that is fresh that you need at that time. Just like the worship team finished prophesying to some people. As I sat down there, I had every cause to believe that some of you, your, your part of this service was when they were ministering. That you are going through all kinds of limitations and lack, but you need to be reminded that Jehovah, your source, never runs dry. It happens when you, when you listen to the word. It happens when you are exposed to his word. Are we together? And I trust that that is part of what God will do tonight. In Jesus' name. Tonight's message is more like an admonition. may not be anything new. Most of us may know what I'm about to share. But I'm sharing this because this is what the Lord laid on my heart last week. And um, as a reminder to some of us, the life that is expected of each and every one of us as believers and as children of God. So right, the topic is a life that pleases God. A life that pleases God. A life that pleases God. Romans chapter 12 verse 1 to 2. We'll walk to, with two scriptures first of all, and then we'll go into the message proper. A life that pleases God. Can you say it together? One, two, go. And I pray that that will be your life after tonight. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. I beseech you dearly, therefore, brethren, the word brethren tells us that he is talking to believers. Amen. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable 
to God, which is your reasonable service. You know, go back to verse 1. So, it is holy first of all, and then you must sustain the state of that sacrifice so that it will be acceptable to God. And the Bible says, if you will ever do anything for God that makes sense, it says this is your reasonable service. The word reason means something that applies to logic. So to you, it makes sense when you fulfill the requirement of this scripture. And what is the requirement? That we present our bodies. So our bodies are supposed to be a sacrifice. The Bible calls, there's an adjective there. It's a living sacrifice. A sacrifice is a sacrifice when it is killed and offered in dedication to a deity. So a true sacrifice must be killed. It lays down its life as worship to a deity. But now the Bible is juxtaposing two different words. That it must be a living sacrifice. And I'm, I'm trying to do this because I want to teach us how to understand the word of God. Sometimes when you read the word of God, it's good to reason. Sometimes you need to look at the words that are used. They were not, it was not by mistake that the words were used there. It says a living sacrifice. That means it is a sacrifice that must be alive continually. It's more like God saying, I want you to live for me. If you were supposed to be a sacrifice unto me, you would have been killed. So that you, John, you're welcome. So that you can be a sacrifice unto me. But God is saying, I don't want you to be killed. I want you to stay alive. But as long as you are alive, everything that is needed to make a sacrifice, a sacrifice must be apportioned to you. And the Bible says it must be holy and acceptable. That's quite difficult. It's more like God say, let's say you have a house now. You are a landlord of a house or a landlady. And God says, I want to rent your house. And then he pays the rent. But he says, this rent I want to pay, I want it to be for the next 10 years. I've not seen when you pay 10 years rent in advance. I've not seen that one. You can pay one and then keep renewing while you are there. But God says, I want to pay for 10 years rent. And I'm not going to live inside. But I want you to leave that house there just for me. Now, you know, that's funny. You can sit down, sir. You know, that's funny. If you, are not, if you paid for the house and you're not going to live inside, well, I'll pack your things and go. Let me give it to someone else. But God says, leave it there for me. As it is empty that it is worthy of my, 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 my recognition. It is a holy sacrifice, a living sacrifice. What is God saying? God is simply saying that this life you have in the flesh is supposed to be lived for me. The Bible says, I am beseeching you by the mercies of God. The mercy of God is what is responsible for our salvation. So if we think that God paid the ultimate price that his son died for our sake, that death and destruction would have been our fate. But he took our place so that we can be alive. God is now saying, if that makes sense to you, then now that you are alive, you are supposed to live for me. It's more like saying, if someone saved my life, I'm supposed to live eternally grateful to that person. Is that true? Are we together? Now, let me make an illustration. Um, okay, as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. So, your life now in the flesh, your life in this body, for as long as you are alive, it must belong to me. In other words, I'm the one that will tell you what to do, and the one that will tell you where to go. You will do everything as though you are my slave. And you'll do it for as long as you are in this body. You know that is against the, natural, the nature of a human being. It is in human nature to be rebellious. 
But God says, now that you are alive, for the rest of your life, you must live devoted to me. Consecrated. The word consecration means when something is set apart for a particular use. The President of the United States, anytime he travels, there are specific cars that are part of his convoy. They are so particular about those cars that he doesn't share them with anybody. And anywhere he's traveling to, those cars are here lifted through a, a very big cargo plane, a C-17 Globemaster. That's the name of the plane, very large plane. Before he gets there, the plane lands with all the cars and his helicopter. Why? Because there are specifications in those cars and that helicopter that best serve only one person. And that's the president. That is what God is saying when he says your life should be holy and acceptable. There is a state of conformity. There is a mode of life of, or a lifestyle. There is a civilization, a culture. You know the word culture means to extract something and keep it in a medium for the purpose of studying it. It means that your life, not only will you just be alive for me, but there is a state of conformity. So before God, nothing, not anything is acceptable. It has nothing to do with bearing a Christian name. I hope you know. You know, I told you one day, I said, these days, the, most of the thieves we have in government, they are bearing Christian names. But the Bible says that your life is a sacrifice. Your body is like a spirit. God is a spirit and he wants to express his nature. He wants to express his character on earth. He wants creation to understand who he is. And so he's looking for a body because based on the law of territory, the Bible says that the heavens of heaven belong to God, but the earth he has given to sons of men. You can only exist on this earth if you have a material body because this earth was created to express that which exists in the invisible realm of which heaven is part of. So God is seeking to express his nature on earth so that creation can see and conform to that nature because that was what was programmed right from creation so god needs a life he needs somebody with a body god doesn't have a physical body so on earth god is illegal it is illegal for god to operate on this earth as spirit as himself you see why most times when you go through problems in this life this is not my message but this is aside most times when you go through problems as believers sometimes we sit down and wonder as though god is not seeing what we are going through and we feel god should just intervene because he sees and knows what you are going through god says yes i have the ability to intervene and turn your situations around but on earth i am illegal as a spirit except you invite me into your life i can't come in that's the system of prayer license and it, it so be please sit down it so be that it is only given to men to pray angels cannot pray spirits cannot pray the only creation that have a creature that has the ability to pray or the license to pray even god cannot pray that's the reason why when jesus christ died he ascended to heaven with a human body why because he knew that our prayer will not be enough to sponsor our existence on earth he knows all the frailties of the flesh he knows that because you came back from work around 7 pm you are tired you cannot pray in the night so there must be a subsidy system by which god can help our prayers because it is by your prayers that God can intervene on earth part time. If you see calamity in a family or in a... It, my God, I don't know why I'm preaching like this. If you see chaos in a community, it's because people don't pray. But it's sad that only human beings can pray. That's the reason why Jesus ascended with his human body. So that he can keep praying in heaven for us. The Bible says that it is Christ who died and has ascended to the heaven. He is at the right hand of God, interceding on our behalf. I thought you would shout amen for that. So that's the reason why this is, this is the reason why God 
needs a human being to lend him his body so that he can express himself now verse 2 says and be not conformed are you there and do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God so there are now that you are saved there are two systems that can govern your existence it is either you live according to the principles or the the, the, the character or the nature of this world the word world there is the word aeon it means age time dispensation there is a way the people of the world behave there is a system that controls the children of disobedience that's why they act the way they act so you can either choose to live like that or you can either choose to allow god control your existence let me have three people here um okay three of you okay you are right <laughs> okay let me use this prayer man can i have three people just three three people yes just three come let me have one lady come please watch this illustration very carefully i need one person to stand here everybody facing this place one person stands here i need one person to stand here okay one person stand behind him directly behind i need you to stand here you come stand here um come my dear ah, this our stage is not big it's okay stand here let me explain this verse too now man is spirit especially a man in christ isn't it spirit body and has what we call a mind that connects the body and the spirit isn't it so more like three in one now the first verse we read said i want you to give me your body as a sacrifice so that i can use this body to express myself that is your reasonable act of service to me but then god knows that the body does not control itself that there is a system within that man that is called the mind that regulates how the body behaves but the the sad part is that though this man has the spirit of god in him yet because this mind is yet to be saved like the spirit is there are tendencies that this mind may not conform to the life of the spirit that is here are we together and if it does not conform to this life it means that this the holy spirit will be in the spirit of this man but what you will be seen displayed in his body will be different from the spirit that exists there because when you were saved it was only your spirit that was recreated in christ jesus your mind was still the same old crooked mind you had that likes beth ninja i know somebody don't like what i said if you are here and you are playing beth ninja may god deliver you in jesus name no i just when i said that i knew somebody was offended so i decided to offend the person the more and i hope god will bless you <laughs> so god now says this is the only way this is possible that your body is a sacrifice is that this your mind must not be conformed to the world the world has a system we call it mind control system everything in this world you see is designed to create a system in the minds of men to control how they think because as a man thinketh in his heart so god says don't be conformed here don't follow the patterns of this world that's the reason why you can see some people who claim to be christians but they can still defraud and do all kinds of things as though they are not you know why though they have the holy spirit in them but the bridge between the spirit and the body is being controlled by another system that's the reason why the person is bearing christian but he stole hundred thousand in the office 
and you think that because he's bearing christian he shouldn't steal even if he's bearing jesus he will steal the more you know let's leave all that superstitious belief that it is about name and all of that haven't you seen people who were called beauty and they they ended up as prostitutes haven't you seen people who are called purity and they have the sh their mouth can abuse per second per second so let's keep that is a superstitious belief that has no root in the word of god this is what the word says that you you have the you have the tendency please sit down to be conformed to the world but the bible says do not be conformed to this world system don't allow the system of the world control your mind he said but allow god to transform your mind by the renewing the word renewal there can be another word for salvation the same change that happened to your spirit that has brought god to exist there is the same change that must happen to your mind though progressive he said then and only then you will be able to know what is the good acceptable and perfect will of god and if you know the good acceptable and perfect will of god it becomes easy to fulfill verse one which is presenting your body as a sacrifice that your life becomes sold out to do only that which is acceptable unto god are we together please you can go sit down god bless you In Hebrews chapter 10, the Bible says, A body has thou given me. He said, I have come to do your will, O Lord. Your law is in my heart. That means this life that I have now doesn't belong to me. There is a way by which I must live it that pleases you. That's the reason why the topic is a life that pleases God. God needs your body. But more importantly, God needs your mind. God needs to transform it. Change it so that you can begin to understand how he thinks and how he operates. He said in Isaiah that as my ways are higher than my, your ways, my thoughts are also higher than your thoughts. So what God is saying is, I want to take you to my own realm where you begin to reason and think like me. If you think like me, even when you have 100 naira in your account, you will not be shaking. You will not be afraid. Because you know that in my realm, abundance is possible. That's the transformation there. You will know that it is written that my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches. Where? Not in central bank. In glory. In glory is the only account that can never be exhausted. So, that means you are going to change a, your pattern of lifestyle. If you were to live like the people of the world, once they have just 1,000 naira in their account, they become afraid, they become timid, they become desperate. They begin to say all manner of things. They become angry because they feel that their life has been brought to a limitation simply because figures were sent to them in form of an alert that that's what you have in your account. That's how the people of the world live. But a man that has truly been transformed knows that 1,000 naira or 1 million naira, all those are figures. My God shall supply all my needs. So that man remains the same whether he has so much or he has little. Meanwhile, in the world, the moment you have 1 million, somebody told me a story of somebody that he, they claim he won Niger bet. Because me, I don't believe to you today that people win that thing. And I have no problem with that. But I just don't believe in that thing. Even if I backslide today, that's the last thing I'll do to make a living. There's, not, there's no assurance there. It's only lazy people that do that kind of thing. The Bible says, go and walk. You want a get-rich-quick scheme. You want 50 million that your mind is not prepared to manage. You want 50 million when you have not learned how to pay tithe of 10,000 naira. So I'm sorry if I'm offending some people. Me, I just don't believe in that. And I was told the story that the young man won the Niger baby is 50 million or I don't know how many million or so. The guy locked up his shop and went on a holiday, a spending spree.
you see the problem with a poor man a poor man thinks when he has money he has everything it is only the rich that think creating system that money is a figure so let's create a system so even when a rich man has billions he's still working out a system that can continually create i'm not being segregational but i just think that mindset came from god because god designed creation in such a way that it runs on itself and when the guy's money was almost finished he now remembered that if this money finished i'm in soup so he went back and refurbished his, his shop and started doing all kinds of things no the bible says do not be conformed to the pattern of this world do not be conformed do not be enslaved but be transformed somebody say transformed the number one agency by which you can be transformed is his word psalms 1 verse 1 to 3 next scripture Psalm 1 verse 1 to 3 blessed is the man the Bible first of all told us what he doesn't do or who is not before telling us what he does or who he is that's how you explain purpose you first of all define what it is not then you can tell us what it is blessed is the man a man that is blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly the word counsel there in a layman's language can be the system of reasoning advice or strategies that are gotten from a thinking pattern that the ungodly there is a way they reason god does not just call them ungodly because they are not bearing christian name no 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 no. there is a, a system by which they operate there is a a mode of lifestyle by which they live that controls their livelihood the bible calls them calls it the counsel of the ungodly say the blessed man doesn't walk in that in other words he doesn't pattern his life at, like unbelievers those of you who have stayed in abuja Nasarawa, Benue, you know that Abuja road, that um, that road to Kefi, you know it travels down to Makodi. From from Nasarawa, from Karuloka government, if you go on that road consistently, in every um, settlement or every village or city there, you find one particular phenomenon on the road. You find bars, bar, drinking bar, pepper soup bar. How many of you know that? But you don't want to say so that I will not say you are going there. You find pepper soup bar. I know somebody say, ah, but apostle, we just you just to go and drink pepper soup now. Yeah. As you are drinking that pepper soup on your first day, the bottle of star is calling you. You know that kind of star that is sweating, the one that they brought out of the fridge say apostle is just to go and drink one month later you are on that bottle from that road i took time to observe this from there down to makodi you see bars on the road so what do they do especially those who have stayed in makodi i love the, the people and the city of makodi god bless them but i'm just telling you the counsel of the ungodly that after every month ends at the end of the month they drive down to those bars at on the last friday or the weekend the last weekend of that month and you know that's when they have received a lot for their salary and then drink the salary into the next month now they have deceived themselves to do what they call adashe you know that <laughs> i will offend some people this night too, but i'm sorry but i want you to reason it's because we have consumer friendly people they want to eat everything and finish it then they enter the next month as though they didn't receive a salary that's the reason why they start borrowing borrowing so by the end of the month when the salary comes again they divide it into two the first part goes to pay what they have borrowed then the next part they take it and pay their tithe in those drinking bars because tithe is the first thing you take out of your salary and in meduguri we have what's that place you don't want to talk, ba? Okay, me too. I will not say anything. 
You know that place, but we have that place. The Bible says that is the counsel. That's how they think. That is their strategy for living. They will tell you, oh boy, enjoy life, chop life. Any day man will die. So they have sealed their future to be at the detriment of death. The Bible says, blessed is the man. Please sit, be, be seated. Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. Next line. It says, nor stands in the path of sinners. Okay, I'm not doing it, but I'm with them. The Bible says, he that walketh with the wise shall be wise, but the companion of fools shall be destroyed. If the companion of fools shall be destroyed, what will happen to the fools? They will disintegrate. Say, ah, Apostle, I'm not there. We went there together. Me, I took more to, but you are standing in the way of sinners. You are there with them. It's only a matter of time. That mouth will transform into a star bottle. Hallelujah. Are we getting blessed? No seats in the seat of the... I love drunkards, but I have nothing to do with them. The only thing that will join me and them is, is the gospel. I don't have any friend who is a drunkard. I don't have any friend. I don't care how much they earn. Because this is the explanation of this verse. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. Those who are jesters, they make fun of everything. They are never serious about life. That's the meaning of scornful there. They are never serious about life. Say, ah, I mean, my own life, I know they rush myself. Oh, anything will go come, go come. And the person is going, growing poorer every day. Anything will go come, go come. Really? The Bible says poverty will knock on your door like an armed man. Verse 2. It says, but his delight... This is a blessed man. His pleasure is first of all in the law. The Bible didn't say the word of the Lord. Because this dimension of the word of God is an instructive dimension where you don't reason with it. Or you don't, uh, you don't, it doesn't suggest to you. It is a law. When God's word becomes law in your life, you respond with obedience. The Bible says he finds pleasure in the law of the Lord. He doesn't have a challenge when God tells him, do this, do that. He doesn't have a challenge with that. His delight is in the law of the Lord. Where is your delight? Where do you find pleasure in? Watching season film. There are some people now, if, if this was a Super Sunday, you know what they call Super Sunday in Premier League? Maybe some of the big teams are playing. Their own church, their house, the television in their house will not, is not good enough. Is the television in a football? They don't mind missing a service for it. In fact, some can be in church that time and they are checking scores. Oh boy, oh boy, half time. No worry, I'll soon come. Pastor, Pastor, will soon finish. I'll soon come. I'll soon come. He said, but his delight is where? In the law of the Lord. And in his law, he meditates day and night. Meaning that this guy is a psychophant of the word of God. He wakes up in the morning. That is what he's thinking. He's reasoning scripture. He's seeing how he can apply scripture to every area of life. He's interpreting every part of life in the lens of scripture. An accident happened when he was on his way to work. And then he's thinking scripture. That the Bible says, be not friendly with wine or do not drink strong drink because it will do this and that. Because the person who drove that car had the accident was a drunkard. What I'm saying is, he tries to interpret every part of his life from the lens of scripture. The Bible says he meditates on it day and night. That's the last thing he sees before he sleeps. Not those who the last thing they watch before they sleep is pornography. Or the last thing they watch before they sleep is a film where they are killing people then you went to sleep and you saw somebody chasing you with spear is it not the film you watched and i have no problem with that i hope you understand you see some of the things that take our attention may not necessarily be seen in themselves 
it is our indulgence in it that makes it sin it is temptation it is when you indulge in it that it becomes sin but his delight is in the law of the lord and in it he meditates day and night what is the result of this man's life in verse 3 the bible says he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season in other words he's ever fresh and always productive his life is always producing results results that are not common results that are not natural whose leaf also shall not wither ever fresh and whatever he does whatever he does shall do what how many of you want to live in that realm where everything you touch turns to gold you know how to get there your delight must be in the law of the lord what do you spend your mind meditating on some of us only think about the scriptures or think about the word of god on sunday monday to saturday your life is isolated or you spend 70 percent on your time on other things and the word of god you only have time for it at morning devotion morning devotion when they are preaching you are even sleeping if you want your life to really be acceptable unto god to be a sacrifice a a a, your, your, a, a temple that god will live in and manifest his wisdom and his greatness then you must be a lover of the word of god you must spend time on his word you must be keen to know what god is saying about your life you must be keen to receive instruction that comes from him you don't make decisions because you see other people doing that you don't enter into business schemes because you see it working for people no what is god saying his delight his delight when we come and bow down at your feet lord jesus in your presence there is fullness of joy there is nothing there is no one to compare with you i take pleasure in worshiping i take pleasure in worshiping i find pleasure in worshiping the thing about pleasure as far as this life is concerned is you decide what gives you pleasure you decide it you decide your own form you decide your own kind of relaxation for me i want to be like this man that his delight a lot of christians who think that kind of life is boring no you have not touched god enough no man who has truly gone deep in god will say god is boring no way in fact you will see the people of this world and pity them they are more boring because they're always looking forward to something new to happen but the one that lives inside of you that you fellowship with is the one that makes all things new so your life even becomes the new thing in town there are times i'm just praying and all of a sudden god begins to talk to me and when i write down the things he's saying I, I i i tell myself that even if i was to read all the books in this world there would be no place where i would get that kind of wisdom and when i saw that you can take pleasure in him in his word in his presence i decided that every time i need counsel i will go to him a life that pleases god You know what god told me this morning while i was praying he said god must first accept you before he accepts what you have to bring and i sat down to meditate on that statement god must first accept you that means god is not interested in what you have to bring or what you have to give god is interested in who you are and who you are can be determined by either conforming yourself to this world or by allowing the mind of christ to find expression through you 
a life that pleases God. Very quickly, let me show you. A life that pleases God is number one. I'll give you four. Four examples of a life that pleases God. Number one, it is one that believes in the Lord Jesus. A life that pleases God is one that believes in the Lord Jesus. John chapter 6 verse 28 to 29, Jesus was having a discussion with the people. When they came and met him, they were just they were fascinated by the miracle he did the previous day, which was feeding over 5,000 with bread and fish. And then they came to him and said, because they were fascinated about results, they said to him, what shall we do that we may do the works of God? They were excited about the miracles. They were excited about the things he was doing. And they wanted to do what he was doing. They didn't know that in the kingdom it's not about what you do. It's first, about, first of all who you are. They said, what shall we do that we may do the works of God? Jesus said, he's not even about doing. He said, if you ever will do anything called the works of God, first you must do what? Believe in him whom God has sent. A life that pleases God is one that believes in Jesus. That controls the new birth experience. The Bible says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. In verse 10 of that Romans 10, it says, For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. So, believing in the person of Jesus Christ and his walk on Calvary, which is the substitutionary sacrifice for you and I, before God, that is the first step to pleasing him. I hope you know that humanly speaking, we cannot please God. Hello? That's the reason why Jesus came to die. There was no man who could keep all the laws. There was no man who could please God completely. So God had to substitute. The Bible says he made him who was without sin to become sin. So that we will become the righteousness of God. So when we now believe in what Jesus did for us on the cross. And we accept him. We become born again. We have already started our journey by pleasing God. You understand that that means believing in jesus christ makes your life already pleasing to god because you are accepted in christ a life that believes in the lord jesus second corinthians 5 17 says if any man be in christ he's what new creature let's go there yes if any man is in christ he is a new creation yeah in the original greek this is how it is read some words were missing there the words that were present in the original greek is if any one in christ a new creation that's how it is written in the original greek so the moment you believe in jesus and accept his work on calvary for your salvation the bible says you have automatically become a new creation it's a old things have passed away behold all things have become new every sin and everything about your life that made you an offense to god has been totally deleted i was talking with uh, some of our new converts two weeks ago and i told them that when the bible says that god forgives our sins he says, I'll forgive your iniquities and I'll remember them no more. What it means is that when you sin and confess and God forgives you, he takes your sin and he casts it into what I call a sea of forgetfulness. Even God will forget what you have done. So the reason why you still experience guilt is because you are the one still remembering what you did. But before God, he doesn't have a record clean. So the Bible says when you believe, I'm, I'm stressing this because we have a lot of people who come to church who have fraternized with the attitude of being in church. Some of them are even workers. Some of them went through all the classes. 
because they think that when you go through all the classes baptismal class this class that class or you do this and that they think that by the deeds of the classes that's how they can please god not knowing that all those things outside of christ is zero you please god by first being in christ accepting what he did in christ how will you explain when that thief turned to jesus on the cross and he said he said lord remember you when you get to paradise that statement is pregnant what he was saying from that statement was he acknowledged that after that cross jesus was going to another place and from there he will ascend to the father and present his blood and forever atone for the sins of men he acknowledged the substitutionary sacrifice of christ he did not think that christ was dying because he was a thief and jesus said because of what you have said you will be with me in paradise today on the cross so the first stage to pleasing god or the first example of a life that pleases god is a life that truly believes it's not about coming to church no it's not about going through the motions and all of that no if you check those kind of believers because they are not believers you check them you discover that they keep rising and falling rising and falling because they think it is about all the motions they go through they don't know that there is an experience that must happen that makes you a truly born again individual that if any man be in christ there is a change that happens you become new the life of god is activated inside of you you are no longer susceptible to sin again it is that experience that makes you truly pleasing to god i'm no longer a slave to sin i am a child of god i'm no longer a slave to fear i am a child of god the bible says we have the spirit of adoption in us by whom we cry abba father it is that spirit inside of you even when you mess up you are bold to approach his throne because you know that the fact that i just committed a sin doesn't mean it is my life there is another life that lives inside of me the bible says he that is born of god first john 3 7 he that is born of god does not sin leave it read it in the living bible translation he said he that is born of god does not make a practice of sin first example of pleasing god is a life that truly believes in jesus that is our salvation is our redemption the bible says christ has been made unto us wisdom sanctification righteousness everything so you become right before god not by the things you do but because you have found yourself by faith in christ it is being in christ that sponsors any other thing that you think you would do that makes you acceptable because you have been accepted first come on somebody hit your chest and say i have been accepted say it again i have been accepted say it and silence the voice of the devil in your heart i have been accepted somebody say because he didn't pay his tithe god is angry with him you know there are christians who believe that that just because they disobeyed or they did this or that that was wrong they feel that god is now responsible for all the crises in their life no that's not a wicked god if not he will not have the capacity to save we only suffer the consequences of our sin but the bible says if we if we confess our sins he's faithful and just say because i didn't pay my tithe god is suffering me say god flog me I, 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 I don't know where you got that from not from the scriptures i believe you see why it's an experience it is different from the traditional mindset we've had the god that i serve is a god that even when you mess up he's able to cover you up till you recover did you hear what i said you didn't pay the tithe of last month too but he still sent somebody to pay your transport the next day why because he would do what cover you until you the 
a life that pleases God is one that believes in Jesus number two a life that pleases God is one that seeks to conform to the image of Christ it's one that seeks to conform to the image of Christ to conform means to submit yourself to a particular pattern or a form to allow yourself to be influenced by a system to be conformed to be conformed to the image of Christ as far as God is concerned every part of him is revealed in Christ and the Bible says in Colossians chapter 2 verse 10 he said that we are complete in him who is the head above all principalities and powers your completion your being a Christian your fulfilling purpose on everything that you think God will require of you is based on your conformity to the image so when Jesus Christ was on earth he was displaying a lifestyle that anyone who lives by becomes pleasing to God it is called the image the image the image image is representation of something so as far as God is concerned our pattern is Christ everything about us is when we look at him the life that praises God is the one that seeks to conform to seek to conform to the image of Christ means three things here yeah, number one it means revealing the character of Christ from within Le revealing the character of Christ now that Christ lives in you through the Holy Spirit that life that is inside of you seek to allow it find expression it is a life of love it is a life of holiness it is a life of purity it is a life of power it is a life of faith seek to allow it find expression number two it also means to reflect the values of the kingdom to reflect the values of the kingdom you are now a citizen of God's kingdom there is a way the people of the kingdom behave there is a culture a way of life a pattern that must be reflected through you the Bible says in Matthew chapter 5 verse 14 it says you are the light of the world a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden in verse 16 he said let your light so shine that light there is also life because in him was life and that life was the light of men so that light is saying is that the operation of my kingdom in you there are value system that governs every citizen so that when people look at you they know that you are a citizen of my kingdom he said let your light let means allow permit it so you become a man and a woman of values not everything counts for you not everything tell your neighbor not everything say hey, God doesn't look at the outside he looks at the heart are you kidding me why did God say give me your body values that you will not cheat in your workplace when you have access to the finance of the company why because it is the integrity the value system of the kingdom the Bible didn't say cheat and you'll become rich. It says seek ye first the kingdom. Then all these things that the Gentiles run after will be added to you. That's the value system of the kingdom. And then finally, it means to hate iniquity. You want to be conformed to the image of Christ? Three things above many. Number one, revealing the character of Christ from within you number two it means reflecting the values of the kingdom of god number three it means to hate iniquity psalms 45 verse 7 says for thou has loved righteousness and hated wickedness another translation says iniquity what is iniquity iniquity is not sin no iniquity is the way of life of rebellion towards god any life that is in open and total rebellion towards God is iniquity. 
he's not just committing sin it is satan's nature it is satan's culture when he fell and he knew he had lost his place with god he decided that he would provoke rebellion in all of god's creation that system is called iniquity the bible says you want to be conformed to the image of christ you must come to a point where you hate iniquity tell your neighbor hate iniquity you know we have a lot of believers who they say ah, me i'm not doing it too but you keep people around you who are doing it when lord separated from abraham the bible says he went towards sodom chapters later when the angels came to rescue him the bible says he was in the midst of sodom in fact the bible says the first person they met at the gate of sodom was lord you know what you see at the gate of every city you see advertisement that tries to give you an information of what is contained in that city isn't it so lord was at the gate of sodom lord became the advertisement of sodom so if there was immorality in sodom it was lord that would be telling the passers-by say yeah we do amo if there were fraud stars 419ers yahoo yahoo it was lord that was telling them you are welcome in this place it happened here we can show you by natural way by juju and all of that but it wasn't like that from the beginning the bible said from the beginning he pitched his dead near sodom but if you don't develop a hate for sin one day you will be in the center of it you know what it means to hate something to detest it so that the moment you switch on to the internet and the first picture you see is pornographic if you hate iniquity you off that phone first and pray in tongues for 15 minutes then when you get yourself you on the phone switch off your data for three days that's what it means to hate iniquity some of you say it too much if you want to save your destiny that's the way oh, let me tell you you want to save your life that is the way you hate it you start by collecting bribe of five thousand ten thousand the day you'll be signing the check of a bribe of five million even you you will not know we have too many christians that fraternize with iniquity we we, we want to we, we are so afraid of revealing we think we come from a, an inferior kingdom when they talk about your religion outside you see christians very shy no 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 no, no. Ah, just go no way i'm proud of my it's not even a religion it's a way of life and in this kingdom you must hate sin first corinthians 6 let me show you something i know i'll hit some people now but god is transforming you in the process first corinthians chapter 6 verse 15 down to 20. he said do you not know that your bodies are members of christ shall i then take the me your, your what is it is it your spirit did he say your spirit did he say your soul so you say is the outside the heart that god looks at is not the outward which what did he say is the member of christ your body he said shall i then take the members of christ and make them members of a harlot certainly not go on or do you not know that he who is joined to a harlot is one body with her now he's talking about sexual immorality when you 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 say oh me i don't do all this other thing but sleeping around is not a problem the bible says when you sleep around or you go to bed with somebody that is not your wife or your husband he it says it's like joining your body with one for the two he says shall become one flesh did he not say one spirit he said what one flesh go on but he who is joined to the lord is one spirit with him go on flee sexual immorality what did he say please read it is there one to go you you will read it three times till he enters your head one to go number two number three with power i have to say see let me tell you i'm not preaching against anybody i am here to save souls because the devil is on rampage the bible says every other sin you commit is outside your body but the sin of sexual immorality your body it, when it came to the point of the devil he said resist him and he'll flee 
He said, Behold, I've given you authority to trample upon snakes and scorpions. But when he came to sin, what did he say you should do? Run. Don't claim, don't do both face. Don't claim big man. What are you doing in that room, you and that girl, and you are not married to her? He said, She's my church member. She came to visit me. Are you kidding me? And two of you are there alone. You don't have hormones, eh? It's wires you have in your body. Even distribution boxes in houses can blow sometimes. Telling me that you have. Flee. Flee. Tell your neighbor, flee. flee. No, you didn't say with power. Say it and provoke your neighbor. Flee. Every sin that a man does is outside the body. But he who commits sexual immorality sins against his body. Go, go on. Or do you not know that your body, this is why you should not even afford to sin against your own body. He said, for you, do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you? So every time you get into immorality, you have desecrated his temple. You make the place in unconducive for him to stay. That's the reason why ah, people who live, I, I, don't, I, I love everybody, I love sinners as well. But people who make immorality a lifestyle, when you look at them physically, sometimes you either see them looking rejected, you see them looking malformed. There is just no radiance around their life. There is no glory around their life. There is no presence. They become lightweight. I will not tell you what I'm not doing, no. Did they hear me? Flee. Next verse 20, let's finish it. For you were bought at a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit. For you were bought. For you were bought for you were bought so next time you want to be part of those who will steal please be seated next time you want to join those who are going to steal and they say we'll give you your own share remember that the bible says you were bought you were bought that body you want to use to steal belongs to god that mouth you want to use to gossip was bought some of you say, hey, me, I don't do all those things. So, but some of you can live in bitterness against a fellow church member for months and keep mileage. Oh, I touched some people there right now. Say, hey, me, I don't gossip. Oh, I don't steal. Oh, I don't. But just because the person addressed you harshly, say, me, this small girl, she know who I be. And then you become bitter for months in the same temple the holy ghost is i guarantee you you will never experience the presence of god like that you know people don't know i don't know about you but one of my greatest asset is the presence of the holy spirit in my body any day without him i will know i've developed my consciousness to a point where if i know i sin right there i have to say i'm sorry i can't live without his presence it's risky. Please be seated. Second Timothy chapter 2, Paul was talking. He says in verse 19, Nevertheless, the foundation of the Lord standeth sure. Having this seal upon them, the Lord knoweth those who are his. He said, And let they that name it the name of the Lord do what? Depart from iniquity. Depart. Turn away from it. Don't have an attachment. Don't have a fraternity with it. Don't turn sideways and say, ah, just in case I can steal. No, don't be like, Lord. The Bible says, depart. Turn away from it. Is it anger? Is it bitterness? Is it malice? In church, in the same church. That's one of the most terrible, malice. In the same department, malice why just because one day the person addressed you wrongly please be seated sir thank you hate name it 
he said for in a great house there are many vessels he said there are those of gold and of silver then he said there are those of wood and clay he says some to honor and some to now the first thing is they are all vessels isn't it they are all going to be used by the master but the differences will be in their being used their usage he says some be used unto honor and some unto dishonor he said therefore if a man purges himself of the letter he shall be a vessel unto honor fit for the master's use i hope you know that your ceramic plate in your kitchen is a vessel in your house your glass cup is a vessel in your house your dustbin is also a vessel isn't it but the difference is in their usage some to honor you keep indulging in immorality and sin you keep fraternizing with sin god will still use you but he will not use you for honorable purposes he, you will be a prophet but he will no longer tell you the revival that is about to come but you can see people's phone numbers you can see their address you can see but when god wants to do something in a generation he will not disclose it to you some to honor some to dishonor can you pray in one minute and say lord i want to be a vessel used unto honor for your glory pray as a matter of destiny how will i live this life not being used by god why will god bypass me and use other people around is life worth the living without god lift your voice and say lord i repent of anything i want to be a vessel a vessel that hosts your glory that carries your presence i want to be a heavy weight of your glory oh lord i want to know your glory i want to offer a sacrifice of praise fill this temple lord with your spirit once again fill this temple lord fill this temple with your Fill my body, fill my vessel. Use me for your glory, Lord. Please be seated. If any, if my body will carry anything, let it carry the glory of God. Let it carry God's anointing. Let it carry and communicate His power, His wisdom. When they see me, let them see a man of God indeed. I don't know about you, but I, want, I have a burning passion all these years to reveal God. It's not about ministry. You can be in ministry and God will not use you for honorable purposes. But there are people that God say, can I hide from Abraham? have you gotten to that place with god whereby holiness you have you have been able to keep yourself from the evil in this world you are in the same office with your colleagues doing all kinds of things but you are kept for him and every time god will come to a territory he comes to look for you is that what you want then you must seek to conform to the image of christ the bible says jesus lived for the father he lived for him even against the wishes of men even when they, they hated him in some places he still lived for the father may the lord help us in jesus name number three a life that pleases god is one that truly expresses the love of god a life that pleases god is one that truly expresses the love of god that truly expresses the love of God the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and how long forever
the love of God the love of God for God so loved the world that he gave is a love that can be expressed in sincerity and by its sacrifice you want to live a life that pleases God that you must truly seek to express the love of God that was what Jesus expressed on the cross hated by the same people he served the same people he healed he raised their dead back to life fed them when the, their economy was diminished gave them hope they said crucify him we don't care give us a robber give us a murderer than this one he hung on that cross but out of love he said father forgive them for they know not what are you kidding me they don't know what they are doing it's love because the bible says love covered a multitude of sin god knew that they knew what they were doing because that was not the first time they rejected god that was only the peak but jesus was standing between heaven and earth he said father if i allow you you will punish these people you will destroy them he said but forgive them forgive them on the base that they don't know what they are doing in other words let let their deeds be placed on me let their sin be placed on me that's true love Jesus said by this shall all men know that you are my disciple if you have love one for another not if you are anointed not if you pray for 12 hours it's high time we stop those things are good but it's high time we stop rating our spiritual maturity by those things no there is a system of maturity that sponsors those things he said no if you are an usher in, God, in church not if you give the highest jesus was in the temple rich men were coming to give all that they they could the bible says a widow gave two mites jesus said this one gave more than everybody so the question is what then is true giving before god true giving is measured by how much is left when giving when the gift has been given want to truly love god it will show in your substance you have ten thousand naira. you give god 500 naira. then you now come to church and sing i love you jesus i worship and adore you just want to tell you lord i love you more than ever Sanctimoniously, meanwhile, out of the 10,000 he gave you, you gave 500. You know, every time you give, what you are doing is you are you are you are expressing the value of the of the recipient through your gift. You are telling God that you are worth 500 to me. But you truly want to you want to please God, He must truly express that love. You must lavish it on Him. When God comes to you in the night and say, empty your account, you will do it happily. First John chapter 3, give us that scripture, verse 16. Let's read something there and then we'll finish this point. A life that pleases God is one that truly expresses the love. Not the love of man. The love that is the God kind. Agape. Love that is love indeed. He said, by this we know love. By this we know love. In other words, this is how love is this defined. Because he laid down his life for us. And we also ought to do what? Lay down our lives for the brethren. In other words, true love is, is, is revealed based on the sacrificial nature of believers. That if it will cost you your life for the kingdom, you are willing to lay down. The Bible says, by this we know love. There are people that if, if a bomb sounds this night now, and we have a prayer tomorrow, nobody, they will not come to church. They will not come to church. There are people that their love for God is moderated by the rainfall. Rain start falling. Say, I wanted to come home, but as soon as it was 3 o'clock, the rain started falling. I had to just stay, you know. Because to that person, it is crazy to go under rain for God. 
How will I look like before people? My makeup will be washed away with water. My scarf that I took time to tie will be loose. I'll be looking wet and soaked. How would you look before God? Have you checked that one? Have you truly checked that? True love. The Bible says, it is by this we will know love when we lay down our lives for the brethren. Go on to verse 18, 17 and 18. But whosoever has this world's goods and sees his brother in need and shuts up his heart from him, how does love no go back go back there let's not rush it let them see it how does the love of god abide in him next verse my little children let's read together one to go my little children let us not love in word or in tongue So before God, he doesn't measure your love for him or your love for people by what you say. He measures it by what you do. In deed and in truth. When was the last time you saw people hungry and you were ready to give even your all for them? When was the last time you paid the school fees of someone who was not your child because you can't stand seeing them thrown out of school? Because this church mode that we are adapting to is making us forget the essentials. It's making us forget the real thing. Let me tell you the truth. The, I, this is my, I, I told us this is my system. This is my own uh, uh, um, um, Christ, definition of Christianity for me. God first, others next, me last. God what? Others, me Those days when we were young, ha, my dad, we didn't like him for it that time, but now I thank God. It was a training. Anytime there's a need outside the house, especially to a brethren or a need in the church, he will come and take our feeding money and use it to solve the need. Then he will come and tell us, well, pray and fast so that <laughs> exercise fit. And in our mind, we say, which fit? Is that not the money you were supposed to give us? And we hated him for it that time. But now I'm grateful that he taught us sacrifice as the nature of love. Many of you, even to give God is a problem. How much more people? We finish now from here. Cars will be driving off. How many, of, how many people with their cars will stop for a, a fellow brethren who came from the same program say where are you headed to so so please okay me i'm going this way but can i drop you at the junction they'll say no you don't trust anybody in church oh. some people are 419 5419 so some people that's how that, that person did this and da, 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 all kinds of excuses for us not to show true love we want to please him then it must be a life that truly expresses love the love of God. Number four, please be seated. Lastly, and then we'll pray. A life that pleases God. A life that pleases God is one that is truly yielded to the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, I love you. You guide me in all things. You guide me in all things. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, and you. to truly please God 
finally for today's service you, you must live a life that is truly yielded truly yielded truly yielded to the holy spirit that the holy spirit becomes your lord see i didn't say god though god and lord are two different things he is always god but there are things you will do that makes him lord over your life he is god over all flesh but he's not lord of all he is the god of all flesh but he's not the lord of all flesh it takes a level of submission and yieldedness for him to become your lord your lord means everything you say yes sir whether it is convenient or not yes sir you must be truly yielded to him yielding to the holy spirit starts from seeking intimacy through fellowship with him let's start from there first because I, I don't think I don't know how you can be yielded to him or submitted to him when you have not experienced intimacy with him God designed our work with him in such a way that the foundation must be intimacy first that you will know him and be one with him first and it's something you must seek it's not something that he will give to you intimacy is a reward for god seekers and it happens when you spend time to fellowship with him so for you please sit down sir thank you so for you prayer is not just to ask for a request or make a request for you prayer is not just to feel spiritual so that when you come and they say how many of you pray today you say ah, yes yes i pray three hours you know we we are always in the business of wanting to do so that we'll be justified not knowing that you are justified to do because before god that your three hours may be blabbing and then somebody who just spent 30 minutes in his presence god will say that's the one i honor though that's the one i met with today you were just here your mind is not even in the prayer no 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 you give him time you give him attention or you are praying in, in tongues then you are with your phone help me with that phone <laughs> replying this okay no i'll see you tomorrow how are you some of us are like that church is going on you go outside and go and pick up it's because first of all in your secret you don't even know the god you are serving simply because he's not tangibly represented there doesn't mean he's not there so yielding to him starts first of all when you seek intimacy you acknowledge his presence and you spend time before god that is not waste of time you spend time some of, human beings are too arrogant and proud to spend time with god they feel it's a waste of time there are men who feel that they, you make them feminine when you talk about these things. How can me, I'm a man, fall in love with God like that? And, ah, no, 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 no. I mean, eh? My daddy, my daddy, that's the state you take. Your baby is singing. I will be singing and dancing and shouting for the rest of the time. Sing it one more time. My daddy, my daddy. I may be someone's father, but before you, I may be, I'm your baby. I'm your child. I will be singing for the rest. So you drop your apostleship outside. You drop your pastoral title. Do you know I'm the head of the RCC Board of Elders? You drop it outside. You come before him like a child. That's what Jesus meant when he said, except you be, you are converted like one of these little children. No claiming boss before God. No. God tells you, shut down your Wednesday, I want to talk to you. Even when a business deal is calling, you lock your door. We know how to give attention to every other thing but God. No. You want to be yielded to him? It starts from giving him time. It starts from becoming intimate with him. 
and then when you become intimate with him and fellowship with him that is when you will seek to please him you will seek to obey his voice and do the things he says he said man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeded not by every word that was written by every word that proceeded so you are waiting for what he will say and respond in obedience that's what it means to yield to him yielding to him in all your choices and decision even when you look like a fool sometimes god will make you make decisions that will leave you without an explanation to people say what will i tell them you have graduated now you have traveled back and gone but god said give me six more months stay in this town say how will i what will i tell people people will say i spilled over now we are so bothered about what people will say not what god says you can't yield to him like that i'm showing you the secret to always living in victory because when a man is truly yielded to god god becomes jealous about your life god becomes jealous i'm i'm telling you what i live in there are things you will not even ask god for he will bring it to you you will go to bed with a thought i need to buy this the following day somebody will bring it to your house There was a time God and I were doing giving competition. I sowed some seed. God brought the harvest. I sowed again. He brought the harvest. So I said, let's see who will be tired. And then God told me, son, no man can outgive me. Just enjoy it as a, as, a, as, as a provision of my love for you. This is a life that is truly yielded to him. And then when you are yielded to him, you will learn how to wait upon him. What did the Bible say in Isaiah chapter 40 verse 31? Even the youth shall be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord, wait, wait. They that wait upon the Lord, not they that wait upon God. They that wait upon the Lord. The Lord, the owner, the master. It's like a king. You stay there until he comes on that issue. If he says, I'll give you a child after three years, you wait upon him. Waiting upon him is not fasting. No, no. let's not deceive ourselves. He was never written black and white that those waiting on the Lord is fasting. No, it's just one of the things you do. It is it's one, it's a product. Waiting on the Lord means you stay for his choices. He's attending to other people. He's not attending to you. You remain there. And you are not offended lord even if you don't give me children after three years i'll still praise you i'll wait upon you i don't mind waiting i don't mind waiting i don't mind waiting on you lord i don't mind waiting opportunities are coming for people to apply and get another job leave this place god said no wait here for two more years wait here for two more years with twenty-five thousand as salary somebody called you and said just change this and that in your cv and bring it we'll give you the job will you choose that over waiting for him life has so many options but you have to decide that god will only be your option that there is only one option in your equation option a god that's all if there is another option option b it means all of the above you know there are questions like that they ask the question they'll say a this b this c a and b then d all of the above if there are two options in my life as far as life is concerned option a god option b option a that's all it's okay at some point you will if people, you people will reproach you people will despise you they will call you mumu but what an honor to be called mumu for the king of kings because the bible says that the wisdom of the foolishness of god is wiser than the wisdom of men that's why i say when they wait on the lord others have gone 
your all your friends married before they were 30 you are 35 no husband keep waiting keep waiting on him I'll put you in front in front of my melody you are all that matters you are all listen to my own version I'll put you in front in front of my destiny you are all that matters I don't care every other option you are all that matters oh you are all that matters oh We are going to pray. This is what it means when you are totally and completely yielded to Him. Above all, pleasing Him is when you wait on Him. When you wait on His options, you wait on His plans. You say, Lord, I know what to do naturally to get to the result, but I decide to follow your own route. Listen, bring it down. Listen, listen. God is not only interested as far as the matters of life and destiny is concerned god is not only interested in getting the result god is interested in the formula the strategy moses brought water out of the rock the second time people drank they were happy god had done a miracle god said because you didn't honor me before them at least there's water now and they are no longer insulting me and abusing you as god god said it was not just about getting miracles it was not just about getting signs it was not just about getting the results it is how you got it because this pattern you followed did not glorify me he said because of that you are not going to the promised land god is interested in the equation for your destiny and tonight as we lift up our voice to pray there's no prayer point this night oh with what you are he you heard i will give you five minutes to cry to god but we are saying to him that we are going to live that life that truly pleases him we are going to be yielded completely completely in everything and in every way to his ways and to his wisdom lift your voice and talk to him in the next five minutes you are all that man is it the house or is it the car i will give them to you i didn't say sing you pray is it the fame or the name? I'm nothing without you. What will I become of me if I didn't see your light? What will I be said of me if you didn't hold my hand? Now I've come to realize that you are.
keep praying that as a student my life will please you I will always and completely believe in you as my Lord I will seek to express your love I will seek to be conformed to the image of your son to live a life that truly reflects your values and I'll forever be yielded to your spirit it doesn't matter what my friends are saying it doesn't matter what the trends of the world I want to live a life that pleases you as a banker I will live a life that pleases you in my work environment as a doctor as a minister of the gospel as a businessman are you praying come on pray come on pray come on pray Lord grant me grace I want to represent you to my generation I want to represent you to my world I want to live for you enough of yielding to the pressures of life enough of compromising enough of bowing to bear enough of power to the systems of this world I want to please you give me grace help me Jesus help me a body will you give him yours it is yours to keep but will you give him your life will you give him your body will you live for him in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation will you choose to be a slave to God rather than live in independence of yourself you are a Hallelujah. Let's sing that song three more times. Oh, yeah. Everybody together, let's raise that song as an anthem of consecration to Him. If you can, you can lift your hands to Him. down I want to make an altar call for those who are not born again or those who need to rededicate their life but before I do that I want us to listen eyes closed everywhere the Holy Spirit whispered to my ear just now and I believe this word is for some people God is asking my son my daughter can you lend me your life 
can you lend me your life I'm not even saying give me I'm just saying lend me can you lend me your life as you return back home tonight let that question resound in your heart life is what the living when it is lived to please him and while all eyes are closed and no movement everywhere if you know you are here and you are not born again truly you say apostle i go to church of a truth but i've not truly experienced the new birth i can't really say if i truly believe in jesus or not i was born in church i grew up doing this but i've never made a public declaration for him or perhaps you were born again but many things the pressures and the cares of this life have diverted your attention and your love for God is almost completely diminished if you are not ashamed tonight if you are part of these two categories I'd like you to lift up your right hand I want to pray for you and I want to rest lead you back to him and ensure that your life is restored you are here you need to give your life to the Lord afresh or you want to rededicate your life wherever you are please just raise your right hand and I'll pray with you right where you are all that matters oh, hey, oh, hey. if you are raising your right hand please raise it very well this is a prayer I will make listen everywhere if you know you are here you love God but truly sometimes there are things that tend to take your attention away from him or sometimes there are things that tend to make you compromise your stand for him with what you have heard you want to decide to truly live for him you want to come to a point where you hate iniquity and it doesn't matter if people call you old school you want to live for him i want you to place your right hand on your chest perhaps maybe you are you are struggling with one thing or the other it's going to be a general prayer of consecration that lord if you will give me the grace i want to live for you lord if you will strengthen me i want to live and ensure that you are Lord unopposed over my life. I struggle with this, I struggle with that, but it's time to say complete yes to him. It is time to walk thoroughly and truly in his path. Put your right hand on your chest. I will pray right on your seat. This is not an order call. This is just for those who are now determined to run this race with him. Father, I pray for everyone whose right hand is on their chest, those here and those online. I pray that in the name of Jesus, may the love of God infect your heart completely. I said, may the love of, love of God infect your heart like cancer. May you fall so deeply in love with God that your love for God will overwhelm the pressures and the cares of this life. I declare that from today, that life of God that is in your spirit, I activate it to begin to hate all forms of iniquity and sin. I declare that everything that must have distracted you in time past before now loses its power over your life. In the name of the Lord Jesus. And I pray that the Lord will make you so fanatic about doing His will. The Lord will make you so fanatic about living for Him. The Lord will make you a die hard for him at all times. And the Lord will cause that you will represent him to your generation. You will represent him in your workplace. You will represent him in your business environment. You will represent him as a student. You will represent him as a lecturer. You will represent him in every sphere of life. You will not bow to Baal. You will not bow to the systems of this world. And I declare in the name of Jesus, by the ministry of the word and by the ministry of the Holy Spirit, that from today your life will experience complete and total transformation. You will do only those things that please Him. 
lift your hands can i pray for you everybody one more time and lord i pray the grace that sponsors the hunger for intimacy with the holy spirit that men will not rest at all costs until they are with you until they fellowship with you until they carry your presence if there is such a grace may it rest upon your people now i said let it rest upon your children now may you become so intimate with the holy ghost that you walk around with a cloud of his presence on your life you walk around with a cloud of his glory you walk around with his nature being revealed through you in jesus mighty name we pray I believe you will shout a bigger amen. Put your hands together and let's give him praise. If you've been blessed or inspired by this message, you can connect with us by liking our Facebook page and subscribing to our YouTube channel at Sons of Glory Network International. You can also reach us through the number 070 5581 5757. God bless you.